Not many drivers in 97 years of racing have won the pole in back-to-back -back seasons. Ed Carpenter won the pole last year. He's the last driver with a chance to separate James Hinchcliffe from that number one spot now and he's on the track. That's a pretty exclusive club right there and can he, I d can he do it? I, I, it's, I don't know. It well, we're gonna see because remember his teammate, J.R. Hildebrand, was not that fast, was not that impressive. A 227 warm-up lap for Ed. You always get the feeling with Ed here, he's either gonna get it done mm -hmm. or the thing is gonna end up in a big pile because he gives it everything. And he has a lot of affinity for this place. Oh, he really I mean, does. He, and he had, they had figured something out last year and he's on a... Yeah, speed top doesn't speed's look great. not the end. No, no. Tracking fourth right now. This is weird. I think that the increase in temperatures caught some people out and I just... It's well, not looking good. Yeah, remember we thought Hildebrand, because he wasn't using all the road, maybe had too much downforce in the car for what he needed, and uh, maybe can, this is the same I thing. I can guarantee you Ed's Lap not got one. too much downforce. I bet there's nothing else to pull off that car right Whoa, now. Whoa, 231, 442 for the first lap for Ed Carpenter. Let's see the drop off. It's gonna be there. Here we go. All comes down to these last two laps, last three laps. Hinchcliffe's first lap was 231.6. His second lap was 231.0. Carpenter a little slower than Hinch was on the first <laughs> lap. Let's see how the second laps compare. Teams have been working on their qualifying packages since qualifying ended last year. And drivers have been thinking about how they need to improve, or in Ed's case, how he's going to hang on to that. Lap thing. two. 231.2. Two. A little faster than Hinch's second lap. It's just about probably, where were you now? Well, Truth or consequence, here we go. <laughs> Tracker still sitting on fourth. It's a game of inches, it's the smallest amount makes a difference between between success and failure here. Uh, the I thing think is, that Tracker's stuck. Ed's, Ed's got it all to do, it's in his hands. James is done, so it's the worst feeling in the world. You have no control over the outcome right now. It's, uh, it's got a bad be, line. It's gotta be miserable for Hinch. That has gotta be miserable. It sucks. <laughs> White flag, third lap, lap time, 230.7, jumped up to second. And this is the corner, this is the one that everybody's having problems with. Hinch's fourth lap was 229.8. Now it's up to first, the tracker is. Oh, this is Gonna so close. Gonna come down close. to the final two corners. Good line through there. He got it down in the white line, and he's hanging on coming off the and, corner. And no wiggle. No, no wiggle. wiggle. No wiggle. And I bet it's oh, almost so on low. the curve. Oh. Is it Hinch? Put your head down. Is it Carpenter? Checkered flag is up. Who's on the pole for the Indianapolis Checkered 500? Flag. That's got to be Carpenter. Ed uh, Carpenter. <laughs> nice job, boys. Nice job, Ed. Back to back. That's a Good job, boys. He nailed it. Nailed it. That's an accomplishment. That is a great accomplishment. In your own team as well. And in your own city, he is, he is from Indianapolis. Fabulous. And the two big teams he knocked off with Andretti Autosport and also Penske. Great job, Ed. Great job. Look how much it means. Look how much it means. Great job, buddy. The bragging rights. Just, you've got that for a while. Love you, buddy. That was awesome. Uh, let's go get our driver. <laughs> that is exceptional. Well done. So much pressure. And to beat so many teams that have more than what they have and to have worked on what they had last year and to be able to replicate it is phenomenal. Brilliant. And you know, Ed stepped out of the car on the road courses this year, put Mike Conway in, uh, looking from the team owner side of things. That was a big thing to do. Race, you know, Eagles of a race driver and Ed just said, this guy can do that. He's focused on this. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be tough to beat him come a week, uh, a week today. 231.067 miles an hour. The four lap average speed, Ed Carpenter, We'll start on pole position for next Sunday's Indianapolis 500 mile race for the second year in a row. The graduate of Butler University, Great recently job. honored with their distinguished <laughs> alumni award, native here of Indianapolis, with so many ties to the Speedway. Listen Family to the ties. crowd. Listen to the crowd. That's cool. And those are the best hugs of all from your, from your wife or your girlfriend, aren't they? Look, yeah, he's still shaking. Look at that. Actually, his hands are pretty steady. He got the hands device off earlier. I wouldn't have managed that, I would say. He's a pretty cool customer. The Dan Weldon tribute on his hands yes. device. That's lovely. Yeah. 
I, I took a lot of driving to do it today. There were many drivers that were very close to putting it into the wall, and you had to make a very difficult decision to take all of that downforce off because you know those last two laps, it's going to be touch and go whether you make it. It's that tightrope, isn't it? And they nailed it on the setup, and Ed just drove it very, very nicely. Well, Ed Carpenter is going to be on pole position for the 500, and in the middle of the scrum is Jamie Little. And Ed Carpenter, he's been here before. You were tracking fourth after that first lap. We know your teammate struggled with his car. What did it take to dig deep and get here to get your second straight pole at the Indy 500? It was hard. Hey, baby, thank you. It was a lot harder run than, than last year. You know, obviously, I uh, wish we could have got JR, JR up there with us, too. We just missed a little bit on his balance. And, you know, it probably it was a little bit of a benefit. We, we were able to make a small balance adjustment on mine. Um, you know, and that helped us, but it, it was a fight. You know, the conditions change. This is the most different it's been over the two days of qualifying. And I think you saw a lot of guys struggle, you know, a lot more inconsistency uh, over the four laps than, than what we saw yesterday. Um, you know, I knew what the average was, so I was just hanging on and giving it all I had, and it, it was enough for today. So, uh, you know, it's awesome to do this two years in a row. Um, you know, I, I was surprised last year. Obviously, we felt coming in this year that we'd have a chance at it, but, uh, you know, it's all about the race, you know. We, we won the pole and finished 10th in the ra race last year, and um, I wasn't happy with that. So hopefully we'll be able to close the deal this year. Ed, it's been seven months since you've been in a race car. You come out here, you're the team owner as well. How do you take that hat off, put your driver's hat on, and dig as deep as you did today? I've got great people behind me, starting with my wife, Heather. You know, she does a lot for our family and allows me to, to race and work on the team. And then beyond that, Fuzzy's Vodka, you know, Stuart Reed, Fuzzy, uh, you guys allow me to, to chase my dreams each and every day. And uh, we've got one hell of a team behind us, you know, both on the 20 and 21 car. The Indiana boy, you went through this last year. How do you think this city, this town, is going to accept this once again? You know, racer, racers and pacers right now. So go pacers, beat the heat. All right, there you have it. Ed Carpenter on the pole for the second straight year for the Indy 500, Alan.